Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is the 19th of July, 2023, and I get asked a lot of times to, to identify rocks for people. Um, I get a lot of requests on YouTube, on Facebook, on every, every platform I'm on, and my cell phone daily to help identify rocks. People are so sure they have found a meteorite, and they just want to send it. They want to send pictures, and they're just counting their dollar bills. Well, we are going to have a little bit of a mini hangout today just, to, just for you rock hounders out there who think you might have something. We're going to show you a bag of stuff that I received, and we're going to roll through it pretty quickly with our opinions. Um, then afterwards, what's most important and really why you want to stick around is at the end, we're going to share all the advice from the crew for you, the rock hounder who thinks you might have found a meteorite, or if you're investing your time on the weekends hunting and hunting for these meteorites, we have some advice from experts at the end of the video of how you can educate your mind and educate your eye to finding the meteorites. So hopefully this helps, and we're going to give you some tools at the end where you can actually upload pictures. If you follow the rules, you'll be able to get expert advice on if your rock is a meteor or not. So let's get right into it. All right, so I've, I've separated the samples into two bags. We have this bag and we have this bag and we're gonna roll through this bag. I had no idea when I offered to help this guy that I was going to be doing it on so many samples. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, let's just take, I don't even wanna put them down to ruin my surface, but let's take a look at it one at a time, guys. And basaltic. Yeah, the first giveaway on that is look how many holes are in that. Yeah, yeah. vesicles. Those yes. are expanding gas vesicles. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Yeah, we are, so we're just going to loop this one in with the same exact reasoning. Yep. Yeah. 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 Too many okay. gas bubbles. Those are Not all to gone. mention that it's like one solid color all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. But it's it's definitely not a meteorite and has no magnetic attraction whatsoever. Um, all right, Look, I mean, some of, some of you guys, there's, see, there's uh, the other one oh, with ex right. expanding gas bubbles. You can put these all in the same pile. Yes. And when people see no. photos on the web of meteorites with holes in them, they don't realize that meteorites the size of a small car, and those holes are not little gas bubbles. They're troll light blowouts or something mm -hmm. yeah. yeah there's no visible metal brecciation brecciation it's like a breccia it's an interesting solid band right by your thumb there that could but be that impact breccia or it could be a volcanic yeah. breccia and that's yeah. probably a class i was thinking it halfway looked sedimentary definitely it, not it a meteor it, it looks sedimentary to me at parts, and I think that's accurate because it does have breccia in it. So it looks like something that was compacted, but there's nothing mm -mm. Yeah. magnetic about it, and there's no properties on the outside. Even the way it's just the lines of the of the, the angles of the cracks. Once you get uh, a trained eye, you can see those type of things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's really not much to say about, like, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's, it's not, I mean, it's magnetic. So like, just because, something's magnetic. you know, just because something's magnetic doesn't mean it's a meteorite. My truck is magnetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than being magnetic, there's nothing on that that says meteorite to me. No, no. That's definitely not meteorite. Yeah. Like Look Jasper. how red that is. Almost looks yeah. like Jasper. Yeah. It's, all right, so like these are like they have no chondral formation whatsoever. No, that's very glossy too. That yeah. line Super. is too thick for fusion crust, or is that is just that, a, that's the that's no, a cutting, maybe that's artifact. A cutting artifact? Yeah, is that a trick? It it may be. It's glassy. Kind of yeah. looks like Vince just said very yeah. feldspar. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow, good. Well, we have someone with some knowledge that we, when he speaks up, we listen. It says Felspar. This and one, Steve has joined us too just now. Oh, good. So we got uh, we got the finder on the on the phone or on the line with us as well. This one, uh, what what does that look like to you guys on the exterior? 
It has a definite interior and exterior, which hmm. is something you don't see in meteorites. That it's is true. It is an interesting rind, but oh, that's much yeah, too so thick. Yeah. Yeah, a couple in. layers of desert varnish. Yeah, mm -hmm. wrong angles, wrong shape. Yeah. yeah. Interesting Very terrestrial cool. sample. Yeah. yeah. Too thick, way too thick. I'd All say right. that's a piece of a concretion that got a rind on it. Okay. Look at. Uh, another jasper type shirt. Yeah, it's, yeah it's it looks very like much. Oh, yeah. 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 Again, there's no magnetism on it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Uh, very glassy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, now that, that's kind of weird because it has, it has a little round thing there, but that's not a chondral. There's really mm -hmm. nothing on this one that says meteorite to me let me try this well one thing about jaspers and flints and agates is if you chip a piece off the fracture line looks like a shell was spalled off a con conchoidal fracture they call it right right so i'm wondering with some of these if you look at the areas where the saw broke a piece off if you see that kind of fracture to it that particular stone is too grainy to be a meteorite. Oh, very, yes. Yeah, are you, uh, Allison, are you talking about the current one on the screen or the previous Yes, one? I am. Yes, okay. I am. Yeah. I'd like to get That's your opinion great. on this one too, Allison. What do you? Again, the linear grains in that are, are just too grainy. And then, yeah, the blobs, they're just not the right shape. Mm -hmm. Could I ask a question? Were all of these from the same location? Um, they they were all I believe they were all found in in around uh, in California and that's as specific as we're gonna get. Okay. Yeah, okay. that looks volcanic. That looks vol almost volcanic. Yeah. Yeah. Looks for us. Right. Uh, no. Again, visible grains. Yep. Yeah, very green. And, and it, it when. You can see a void in there that looks like maybe a missing chondral. Because people will point out the one thing to them that looks <laughs> like a meteor. Like, look, it's a blown out chondral. That's what you showed me on one of those shows. How can there be blown out chondrals in a nickel iron uh, silicate meteorite when there's no magnetism whatsoever? <laughs> so that's one thing I'd like to remind people. When you're, when you're rock hounding, a bit of advice is don't get stuck on the one feature that you like and go, wow look at that and ignore everything else so in the other bag there's some examples of things that if you get lost in what you're seeing versus what you're not seeing uh -huh. so talk to me about this crew what do, what do you see well it looks like nickel in there because when you hold it at the right light it reflects like metal Yes. But if, if it were truly nickel iron, it would be that reflective no matter what direction you held it. Reasonable like, chance that that's smelting slag too. It looks like industrial that's, slag. That's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. It the is extremely magnetic. Yeah. Extremely. Slag. So yeah. I would say that's definitely industrial. Piece of this train. Is <laughs> too many <laughs> gas bubbles in it to be meteoritic for that much iron. Uh, that's not a large chondral you're seeing. That's not an armored chondral you're seeing. So, like people will 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 see that and go, "Oh, it's a round spot surrounded by metal armored chondral." Again, you're getting lost in one detail you saw in one video. But this one appealed to me because when when you do show it like this, mm -hmm. I I could think at certain angles, "Well, we might have a mesosiderite." Well, mesosiderites are usually about 50% silicates and 50% iron or metals. And you just get a trained feel when you have a, mm -hmm. a, a magnet that you've honed to your hand, you know exactly, well, it should not, that jumps onto that like an iron, not a mesosiderite. Right. So I'm agreeing with the crew that this is industrial slag, but a cool meteor wrong in certain angles. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a nice one for a wrong pile. Oh, there, there is one thing that, that I wanted to, wanted to point out on some of these samples. It's not coming out in, the, in this, this is little mini studio lighting here. But when you have this in uh, with a light bulb, uh, not diffused, you see tiny little reflective crystals 
all in the rock. Pat, can you explain why that's a bad thing? Yeah, so crystalline faces like that really are not common in meteorites at all. Uh, that's an indication of larger crystal growth and, uh, and a plane through which those crystal faces are exposed. Awesome. Thank you, sir. This is a solid hunk. Okay. It is 100. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is 100% iron or metal. Could be, a, again, more, more man-made waste. Oh, yeah. Yep. As yeah. soon as you see it from this angle, you go, mm -hmm. whoa. Okay. So, remember. Yeah. yeah. Those holes. This is what an iron looks like. Well, hold on. <laughs> this is what an iron tends to look like on the interior. This is what a mesosiderite tends to look like with the with the distribution and lumping of, of metal sometimes. When you turn it over, you're not going to turn over an iron and have it turn into a melt silicate iron. Like that just doesn't really, that's super, super rare, like weird type stuff that you didn't find. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. One of the strong uh, uh, identifiers for smelting slag is those little beads of metal. Now, mm -hmm. they, they do show up in bencubinites, but bencubinites are ultra rare, and smelting slag is ultra, ultra common. I hope the color comes through on this one. Uh, I have people say, I'm not saying the sender claimed that this was gold, because people claim that I found a, a gold meteorite. Um, <laughs> yeah. this is, this is kind of what I think they're looking at because in natural lighting, it is super gold color and it's weird. Does anyone have any input on what we're looking at? Yeah, expanding gas vesicles. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that sheeting shelf thing there. Again, that's smelting. Yeah. Smelt yeah. man -made the blobby, the smelting. The blobby plastic like flow there. That's also very diagnostic yep. smelting yep. slag. Looks like a rather weathered piece of smelting. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that would be oh, this is the piece of breccia I mentioned earlier. That's pretty cool. I, I think this one uh of the whole box, if you wanted one back, I'd send this one back to you because I think it's uh it's worth it's it's I think it's the most interesting one. It's definitely an impact breccia of some sort, I would imagine. Well, there are pretty volcanic. Impact doesn't have to be impact. Oh, okay. All right. See, that's why I have a crew behind but me. But it's a cool-looking rock. It doesn't yep. have to yeah. be a meteor. Yeah. And there's absolutely no attraction whatsoever. So I'm definitely now, not a meteor. Uh, here are the last two. And man, if you if you showed me this at a certain angle, I could, could imagine if that was filled in and I told you it was a palisite. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the only thing I can justify in my mind if this was a, a worn out olivine, uh, but I mean it just it's not. You know what I mean? So if you're if you find something like this, this type of slag, and you find at a certain angle, wow, it resembles a palisite. Again, you're focusing on what you want to see rather than the hole in a stone that shows different. There's the telltale flow of slag. Yeah. Yeah. Looks and like it was using fishing weight. Yep. <laughs> All right. And then I thought this was super cool because, God, if that was a meteorite, that would be really interesting. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. 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 That, that is a very, very cool meteor wrong. It's yeah. wrong for all the reasons we mentioned. And it all those was, it's are definitely been yeah. identified as slag. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a neat piece of slag. Yeah. I, I think this one's pretty cool, too. But I don't collect terrestrial stuff. No. Nope. Yep. All right. Now I, I collect slag because it's different in a lot of places I visit. Let's uh, let's check in with the crew now and see what advice we have for rock hounders who may have found stuff like this. So let's let's talk to the crew, see if we can get some advice. An avid rock hounder constantly out there with her family. Allison, what do you have for us? <laughs> Yeah, those are really common meteor wrongs. The finders should not feel bad. That's where we all start when we start looking for meteorites is with a lot of meteor wrongs. Um, I want to go from the rock hounding side of things instead of the meteorite side of things and say that this is a great book for rock and mineral identification. 
Uh, it actually even mentions meteorites a couple of times in the back page, touches on a couple of different kinds, not mm -hmm. deeply, but uh, another tool that you can use is the rock hounding Facebook groups in the same way that we can use the meteorite Facebook groups. There are a lot of rock hounding Facebook groups out there who could offer you a lot of great advice and help. So mm -hmm. awesome. that's about what I had to say though. I think your advice of getting the rock and mineral guide, especially you mentioned one time in one of our hangouts, we did a deeper dive. You mentioned about your local geology because yeah. I thought that was super interesting. More than likely, you're going to collect something in that book rather than a meteorite, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And getting to know your local stuff, get, get together with a local rock counting group. There's a good chance they have found the same things you have and have already identified them. So Getting to know your local geology is a very good idea. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Allison. Appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim Shelton has some information or some advice. Let's go to him in Missouri. I, uh, I collect meteorite books in addition to meteorites. I probably have, uh, probably have almost 100 meteorite books. Okay, this is the one that you should start out with. This is an excellent book by Norton. And I think anybody that wants to get into meteorites ought to have this book. You ought to have it on your shelf. The next one that you should get is probably this one by Kevin Ketchnia, The Art of Collecting. These are kind of rare. Uh, you can find them on eBay. Uh, I, I just found this one uh, last week. This one's brand new. They're all numbered. It's a numbered edition. This is an excellent book for collecting. These two books are the same thing. This one is US and this one is uh, UK. Mm -hmm. It's a different title, same author, same text. Everything's the same, same number of pages. But these are excellent books. This is the one you'll probably be able to find easily. And then lastly, if you really want to get into the, the chemistry and the details about meteorites, you should get a hold of this book. This yeah. comes in two editions. This one just came to me today. This is the second edition. And it, it is a slow read. But if you want to get into nitty gritty details, this is the one to get. Jim, thank you so much for sharing those with us. I, I, it's impactful to know what books have helped the crew members. And it's a constant thing. You, you, you don't just read that book once. It's a reference. You go back and you check stuff because uh, you can't ingest it all at once. So thank you very much for, for your input. Um, what I'm taking away from that is if you expect to learn or want to learn about meteorites, invest some time, read a book. <laughs> Art Wagner, what do you have for us, buddy? Uh, there's one site uh, called Mindat.org, and that's literally the mineral collector's Bible. Every, everything on Mindat has to do with rocks and minerals. It also has a section on meteorites. But there are great examples of photos, and they're listed by the state. And you can go on there and, and do a lot of research that will help you to acclimate your eye to whatever it is you may be finding or you stumble upon in the outdoors. You know, if you're an avid rock hound, just eyeballing the surface, you're going to continuously collect the same road gravel. If you want to collect something unique, you're going to have to dig for it. The most important thing to do is join a rock club, buy a rock and mineral book, and go to rock and mineral shows. Look and talk to the dealers and whatnot. Educate yourself. Go to museums. Not hard things to do, but certainly there's a lot to absorb. And uh, if you think you're going to see a diamond at a rock show and you're going to go out and find one, well, I take my hat off to you and I'd say good luck because uh, it'd probably be a long time before you'll find a real diamond. <laughs> Thank you, Art. I appreciate that. that uh, I know that you put a lot of years into rock counting, so you're not just spouting off. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Pat, I know you have a lot of information to share with us. Could you talk to us about the tools that are available for rock hounds on Facebook? the two groups in particular, if you know of another one, how to interact best with them and what's expected of them in their submissions. This is the gold stuff. This is how to get free rock identification. Pat, take it away. Right, so there are two groups on Facebook, um, Meteorites or Meteorong, 
and is it a meteorite? And uh, there are many other groups who claim to do meteorite identification. Most of them are filled with people who don't know what they're talking about. Those two groups in particular, meteorite or meteor wrong, and is it a meteorite, have a number of people answering uh, inquiries there who have decades of experience, both professional and self-taught. Um, the key to using that resource is respect the people that are there, respect the fact that they're giving you a service that took decades to understand and that they're giving that to you for free. So you, you don't wanna go in there with a chip on your shoulder and argue with them, you wanna go in there and learn. That is uh, an, an excellent, excellent resource. And I, I second Art's uh, comment about MINDAT. That is a massively powerful thing. I can't believe it's free. Uh, that will help you identify earth rocks. Awesome. Thank you, Tubbert. Thank you. We're going to come back to Pat with some more. Um, but I, I do want to let you know that one of the reasons why we are sending you to that resource rather than me doing it myself, which I can't, and I'm not the smartest person. If you send your pictures to that group, if you put a post up where it's one rock per post from all angles out in natural sunlight showing exactly what the rock is, that's going to get your best result. If the group tells you it's not a meteorite, move on. Divorce yourself from it, move on, find a happy mental place and live there. If they say it's a meteorite, immediately email me and I will buy it from you. <laughs> There's going to be someone there. If they say it's a meteorite, trust, we want you to have a meteorite. We want it to be real as you do as well. We're just being realistic and letting science rather than emotion rule. Hopefully that's a good segue to Carl and Diane. Carl and Diane, what do you have for us? I just wanted to expand a little bit about art saying about location. Um, I live in, in New York, you know, and when people brought me rocks, so most of the time, claiming they're meteorites, they were industrial waste, which led me to say that if you were going to be hunting in, especially a state like this, looking for meteorites, which is very difficult, do some research, look up historical maps, find out where various industrial sites were located, and you will find on old maps where there were mines, where there were smelters, where there are all these different things. Just yeah. do the take the time to do the research before you go hunting, especially in difficult areas like the state where I live. It's not like where we have dry deserts or anything like that. Also, if you're hunting a creek bed, look at the upstream area in that watershed because a flood can carry rocks quite a long distance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if the flood flows through an industrial site, you'll get slagged downstream. That, I think that's great reminders to, we, we already had Allison saying, you know, know what you can expect to find in your region. And now we're having more people say, know what you're to expect in your region, know your exact location. Um, so yeah, great. Really appreciate it. We have Greg Shanos. Greg, what do you have for us, man? I just want to add that uh, finding a meteorite is like winning the lottery. And how many of us have won the lottery? <laughs> so, and um, the, the other uh, advice I have is if you're really serious about finding a meteorite, the best way to maximize your chances is to go to what's called the strewn field, is an area of which a known meteorite fall where they fell. And especially if you live in Arizona or Texas, a lot of meteorites have fallen there, like Arizona. Holbrook is a very famous one. Gold Basin, Franconia Notch, just to name a few. Uh, find out where those uh, strewn fields are and go there with a metal detector. And, and that's your best chance of winning the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> Not just, you know, picking up any old rock that looks a little weird you know, yeah. that looks yeah. a little different so that that would be my advice and uh ben fishler one of our uh crew members he hunts the uh holbrook site and he's collected uh pounds and pounds of it uh mm -hmm. from when the when it fell in the early 1900s so there's still stuff out there that hasn't been found fantastic advice greg it's like go to a target rich environment 
Don't go right. in the middle of nowhere. Know, know what to expect by going to a target-rich area, knowing what could be found around there, what the history of, of the place is. Really, really good bringing it all together. Um, we have my beautiful wife, Sue, up next. Sue, what do you got for us? I just wanted to say regarding the Facebook groups, um, definitely um, go to the Facebook groups that Pat recommended specifically. Um, I'm a little bit newer to meteorites than most of the crew and I've been in the other groups checking things out. And I can see how some uh, people that um, aren't educated on meteorites could be really led astray because there are a lot of people who have no idea what they're talking about validating people that don't have media rights and they're it's like they're all taking turn posting and everyone's like great awesome and I'm yes. like oh my gosh they really believe it and like so go to the groups that we specifically recommended that's where the experts are they're not going to be in those other groups exactly and for the last three plus years for the last three plus hundred videos that have been posted on my YouTube channel every single video description has both of those links so I'm not even going to say I'm going to drop it in the description. It's already been there for three years waiting for you. Um, now, batting last, Pat, thank you for your patience. Take us home. A few of these things have been mentioned by others, but I want to say them again, just bring it home. Meteorites are rare. Mm -hmm. There are roughly the same poundage of diamonds, gem plus uh, industrial grade abrasive diamonds, as there are meteorites. You can't go out to your gravel driveway, drag a, me a magnet around and expect to find a meteorite. That's not going to happen. Meteorites that are super rare and super valuable are the planetary ones, you know, lunars, Martian, but they are, they are ultra, ultra rare on top of meteorites being ultra, ultra rare. So look for chondrules. That's the first thing. You're, you're, if you find a meteorite, 95% of the time, you're going to find a chondrite with chondrules, those are the little spherical things. Um, don't believe Google image search stuff where you post a picture of your rock and it comes back and tells you it's a meteorite. That, that, <laughs> that process is very, very deeply flawed. There's another book too. It's called Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites. O. Richard Norton and uh, Lawrence Chitwood. Uh, extremely good book. Topher's going to show us a... Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I actually have that because this was a gift from my man, Pat. <laughs> so when, when he says he recommends a book because it has value, trust me, it has value. It is a beautiful, beautiful book. And it was even better because it's a gift. So back to you, Pat. Yeah. So that one, so Rocks from Space, excellent book. It's getting a little old. A lot of the pictures are black and white. Field Guide to Meteors and Meteorites, much newer. Colors and, you know, photo colors and specifically more information about meteorite hunting. The other, there's one online resource that was uh, produced by one of our PhD students. I think he's a kind of a perpetual PhD student, uh, Jason Utas, called meteoritegallery.com. It has a bunch of pictures of lots of great meteorites. There's also a section called uh, What Do Meteorites Look Like with dashes between the words uh, that is the best succinct one that I've ever seen online. The other thing too is, you know, trying to, uh, trying to find a meteorite just from looking at photos on the web is about the same as trying to imagine what chocolate ice cream is going to taste like if you've never had chocolate ice cream in your presence and only seen a photo of it on the web. So one thing that you can do that improves your chances dramatically is go to a legitimate dealer and buy a meteorite. So you have one in hand or go to the Tucson show, go to the Denver show, uh, go to the Ensisheim show and actually get some real live in-person hands-on experience with meteorites. It's vastly different than looking at photos on the web. Fantastic, man. I, to I totally agree with you. And as always, uh, Topher Spin Meteorites will be at the Meteorite Mansion in Tucson for 16 days coming up in 2024. So you're going to run into me in Tucson. So there's another uh, resource there. If you lug your rock to Tucson, I'll ID it for you if you can find me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I hope this was really uh, educational and useful for you rock pounders out there. And hey, man, we're rooting for you. Go find one. Thanks a lot.